It seems pious of me to say that I created a new method of making a breast pocket because I am sure there are probably scores if not hundreds of different methods. But I did come up with it independently of anyone or anything. So, like I said, I was disappointed by the method I was given, so I just came up with my own. And given I already have a video on it, I'll start at having drawn the slightly angled 25 by 10 centimeter pocket on the material. Mark a vertical line 3 centimeters from the lapel edge of the pocket and align a piece of fabric to it. Copy off the pocket line and either side of the pocket, adding 3 centimeters to the other side as well. Above the pocket line, mark 1 cm, then 5 above that, and then 1 above that, for the welt and seam allowances. Then measure 7 cm below that for the bearer. Again, mark either side of the pocket on the welt. Cut the two out, and best mark the wrong sides as well. On the pocket, mark 1cm above the pocket line, which will be used to line up the welt and bearer. Cut two pieces of pocketing, 16 by 19 centimeters, and use the welt to trace the angle of the pocket, and cut it off of both pieces. Line up one of the pieces of silicia to the welt, such that it will create an angled shape when folded open. You'll need to be specific about which side, if the fabric is patterned, and then machine them together with a 1cm seam allowance without back decking. Iron the seam open. At the pocket, mark on the reverse where the edges of the pocket are, and fuse two small 2x2cm two two squares of fusing there, and baste a piece of linen over the back of the pocket. Line the welt up to the line you chalked above the pocket line, and baste it in place. Chalk on the edges of the pocket. With the bearer, line that up as well, and fix it in place. For this one, chalk a few millimetres inside of the welt's edges. You'll machine to there. Machine them both with a 1cm seam allowance, thereby fixing the bottom of the welt at the bottom of your pocket, as designed. Remove the three pieces of basting. And, as with the welt pockets, open up the pocket hole. Stop shy one centimeter so of the bearer's stitching, and cut diagonally from there to the stitching, not unlike every other welt pocket. Fold the welt upwards, and from the back, open up the seam. Iron it open. Then, pull open the mitres and iron them open as well. Cut down the stitching holding the pocket to the welt to the width of the pocket. Maybe you want to reinforce the seams here, which I hadn't even thought about until just this second. Kind of obvious in hindsight. 
Place a piece of linen or silicia two and a half or five centimeters wide, depending on whether you want it to fold over itself or you want something much more streamlined, and baste it in place. Fold the welt in on itself before folding it in half and sending the pocketing through the hole. At hazard that you could easily curve the corners of the welt, which is something I did see on YouTube. Straighten out the pocket, and then comes the complicated manoeuvre of fingering the welt to how we want it. Be sure that the welt seam allowances are up inside of the welt. On the front facing side of the welt, we want to extend the side seams beyond the stitching used to machine the welt in place, literally by a millimetre or two, and we want it to go straight upwards. However, we need to fold the behind side such that it will go through the pocket hole. Having gotten it how you want it, use your iron to press it in place. Fold the bearer to the reverse of the jacket and iron the seam open. Iron one centimetre of the bearer up in order to fill it to the other pocket. You could just machine it on something, but professionals have standards. This is bespoke. Line up the other pocket to the first pocket, and baste it to the bearer, before of course felling it. Perform a final check that the welt is positioned the way you want it. Forgive the sudden wetness, but I'm known to have that effect. Base the welt down through everything. With it secure, move the jacket material and the back pocket out of the way and prick stitch the seam allowance of the pocket. You could machine it, except no I won't. Secure thread at the bottom of the welt on the pocketing, and come out where the machining holding the welt in place stops, and use some exceptionally short felling stitches to secure the bottom of the welt to the fabric, and then fill up the edge, remaining as dense as possible to keep the welt as secure as possible. And honestly, if you wanted to use silk thread here, that would be advisable, yes. When you get to the top, fell a few stitches over the top before changing course and prick stitching down back to the bottom. You need to have felled along the top enough to be past the stitching that's holding the bearer in place, otherwise it may be slightly showing. As you prick stitch down, catch as much as possible so that it's being held in place as strongly as possible, so at least catch through to the first pocket bag, keeping the stitches as dense as possible. But get creative with it. Curve it downwards, a diagonal line maybe, just 
Not straight down, because that's lame and boring. Secure the thread at the back again. You could chalk or eyeball the pocket dimensions and machine the pocket together. Cut it down to a 1cm seam allowance, and you could definitely cut down one of the pieces of sleesh to half a centimetre and layer it a bit more. Taper off the top of the pocket, and I cut away some of the linen in the seam seam allowance holding the bearer in place, plus a bit of the back sleesher. There's the basting holding the welt in place, and the basting holding the linen in place, which I forgot about since it's pretty camouflaged against the calico. There is no exact order to the steps. Of the three that I made, I probably used a different order of steps for each of them, but it seems to be a lot simpler than I expected it to be, but it was also a much longer video.